Hi, I'm Lynn Hirschberger, or Lynn H., from ColorJoy.com. I'm here today to teach you how to start your toe in the round after you have knit the square for your Bosnian toe in the crystal socklet pattern from Knitty. I have knit now. Uh, there is a video on how to start this. I knit myself a Bosnian toe in stockinette flat. It's just a plain stockinette square, knit a row, purl a row, uh, with the very first stitch of each row except for the first, uh, slipped as if to purl both on the knit side and the purl side. So now I have 12, 12 rows and 10 stitches, which makes approximately a square. And I'm going to now proceed to make stitches on all four sides of this, not just the side where I've been working. We're going to have to do a transition. Whenever you are going back and forth and then you start going in the round, you have a transition to get from your starting point for flat to the starting point for circular. And so right now I've been working from side to side, but when I'm working in a circle, I'm going to start from the middle of this. And so I have a transition. I'm going to knit five stitches just and go ahead and knit that first one now and not you're not, not uh, making the square anymore so you're not going to slip that first stitch so we're going to knit five stitches and now you have done the transition and you are now at the point where you will be at the beginning of your round or I sometimes call that BOR beginning of round in some of my patterns now at this point we're going to uh, switch needles but this is my beginning part so I'm going to take one of these wonderful open uh, markers and actually go right into the fabric to remind me that that is the beginning of my round. It doesn't matter how you want to use your your needles. You can do the magic loop or two, two circulars or whatever you like. I tend to really enjoy my double pointed needles for some reason. Um, I knit tight and it makes it so I don't have to knit onto uh, onto the fat part of the needle from the thin cord. So this is how I do it, um, but you can do it whatever you want. Just make sure that you know where your beginning of round is. At this point, we're going to uh, start our first round to, to um, make stitches on all of those pieces. So now we're going to knit five more stitches on a new needle or in my case on a new needle and then we are going to turn to the side here and we're going to look we have to really roll it up can you see those long elongated stitches on the side that's where we slipped it so we only worked it every other row and that makes them taller and that's sometimes called a chain edge and what we're going to do here then is we're going to pick up and knit four stitches along that side. Now remember we did four, we did 12 rows. So we really have theoretically six places we can pick up in, but we only need four of them. So we're going to uh, pick up four, one, let's see, one. I've got to go underneath. Maybe I'll start it with a new needle first. I want to go under that, both Vs. Now some people like to go behind just the the far one. That is flatter, but it's less strong. So we're actually making a new stitch with new yarn, um, and you can put it over on this side, or you can keep it on your needle, whichever you prefer. I like to put it over here. And then we're going to do another one. Under here you can use a crochet hook. You can do whatever you need. There's two. Oops, there's three, and here's four. I guess I'll just do that. Once you get past the first two, it's often better. Now, it looks funny here because we just went around a corner and all of the stitches from that corner are on a flat needle. So there's a pucker here, and a lot of times my students are afraid that they did something wrong, but they didn't. You see that these stitches are coming this way, and we're on the side of those stitches over here. So you're doing just fine. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn to the front to where we did our um, 
where we did our cast on and the cast on was a backward loop it was just a simple loop like that and we so we don't have two things to pick up in here we only have one strand to pick up here and I like to go right under this little place right here now we had 10 stitches but when you turn stitches upside down let me show you a little here are two stitches stitches are always V shapes okay so when you turn V's upside down you had two stitches but now you have one stitch and two half stitches so we can't it's going to be hard for us to pick up 10 stitches here because we have nine good stitches and two half stitches on the corners so what we're going to do here is we're going to pick up the nine we can get and this is a corner so you might want to pull that a little tight try to pull those guys together however you do it with your second one you'll pull it again and usually after two tuggy stitches at a corner uh, you, you can not worry so much about the tightness of that join after that point. And so there's two, three, and I've got this pointy needle again. They're so pretty and I thought you could see the needle, or I thought you could see what I was doing better with this dark needle and light yarn, so that's why I'm using this really pointy needle with yarn that's really too big for it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, if you need to use a crochet hook or a duller needle or whatever you need to do, it's not cheating. Just do it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I need two more. And they're right here on this edge. Five, okay, and there's one more. And we are now, there's always a little bump right here. It's not really a knot, but that's the result of our first row of knitting after we did the cast on. Now I'm switching this and pushing this down. Um, now what they want me to do, or what I want you to do, is to uh, pick up and knit five stitches along the second toe triangle. Remember we only picked up four here. We're going to pick up five here because we're going to make up for that one that we're missing on this side. And again if you have another needle here you can do that. I don't have another needle so I'm going to, yes I do. Hello. I don't have another working needle. I'll have to redistribute these in a moment. But So I'm going to go under these now. Again I'm on a side so I'm going to go under the whole V of that stitch and now on this side the V's are going this way before they were going the opposite way. One, two, make sure I'm not slip, not splitting it here, and three. I hope this is staying in focus. The first time I tried to do a video, my vi video wasn't as focused as I wanted it to be. I hope you can hear me. This is the first time I've really had a video that um, that really mattered for me to get up. So I hope that this will work for you. I'd love some feedback. I don't have a lot of uh, fancy equipment here, but I've got a video camera and a kitchen table with a little rug for a background. So now I've picked up and I have stitches on all four sides, although they're not distributed very evenly at this point. Now that we've done those five, we are going to take a look at this first part. You're going to knit five more on the same needle here to get to the beginning of round again. And then we have to kind of take a look at where we are and we're going to divide this into four sections. So now we should have 28 stitches total. And it doesn't matter which needles they're on. 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28. So I passed my own test, which is really cool. Uh, even professionals make uh, make counting mistakes all the time and since I'm mostly looking at a monitor right now instead of my hands it's pretty easy to make a little hiccup here while I'm showing you. So now we are at the center of the sole and what we want is seven. the first seven stitches here are the first half it's going to be like this this is your toe right here there's the toe of your of your sock right there 
okay? And so that's going to be the bottom. So there's going to be seven stitches down here and seven stitches down here, which are the bottom of your foot. And you're going to have 14 stitches on the top of your foot. At this point, you can distribute them on any kind of needles any way you'd like. I'm going to have seven stitches on two needles here, and I'm going to have 14 on the what's called the instep, which is the top of the foot. That's a really typical old-fashioned way to do it. There are plenty of brilliant new fashioned ways to do it too. But now we have basically, we have picked up our, our, our all of our stitches for that first round. If you want to distribute them again, you want to uh, move them over by using the tip of your needle to make them uh, not twist. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have three stitches here that don't belong here. And I guess I'll just do it here one but you notice I want to keep that right leg of the V forward on the needle so that it won't twist later so when I move things over I keep that right leg forward so now this is my seven let's see how many I have here one two three four five six seven so I want two stitches to go up here and I'm going to turn it around because I like doing it from the right to the left I'm sorry from the left to the right the standard good old knitting way and so now I have seven on both bottom needles and 14 on the top and a lot of people do prefer to divide this up into two sections or you can put a marker like this you can put a marker at the midpoint if you like because we are going to be increasing in four places and I'll probably get another marker before I proceed on this so that is how we start the Bosnian toe you are now working in the round instead of flat and you notice there is no instruction about joining the round without twisting. It's pretty hard to twist when you've already got fabric in there. I hope this was helpful to you. I hope that you can see what I'm doing and hear me and that it's focused enough and let me know what you think and I uh, enjoy your knitting. Again this is Lynn H. Lynn Hirschberger from colorjoy.com and we're doing the Bosnian toe from the sock called Crystal Socklet that is on Nitty.com right now in March of 2012. Thank you so much.